The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus, and when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we heard about the next major patriarch who we hear about in passing, uh, the man named Jacob. Uh, Bible trivia, who were Jacob's parents? Rebecca and Isaac. Right? Okay, Rebecca and Isaac had two sons. Uh, the firstborn son was not Jacob, but a man named Esau. And as they were uh, being born as twin brothers, Jacob grasped at his heel, even in the womb. Uh, some people think that's where the English phrase, uh, pulling your leg, uh, comes from. Now, the story of Jacob and Esau is kind of an interesting story. And Jacob in particular uh, is an interesting story in the Old Testament. Uh, he seems kind of like a deceiver. Uh, throughout, throughout most of his stories. Uh, we were talking yesterday about how he uh, stole the blessing from his father Isaac when he wanted to bestow the blessing upon Esau. If you remember the story, uh, earlier on, Esau had actually forfeited his inheritance to Jacob, even though Esau was the firstborn son. He was deserving of the birthright, but there was a story of one of the days Esau had been out hunting and he came back, and he was very thirsty and hungry, and Jacob had some stew, and Esau asked him for it, and Jacob made a deal with him. He said, only if you give me your inheritance or the birthright. And Esau forfeited it. It's one of those times that Jacob took advantage of his brother Esau, but I think in a particular way, that was mentioned in a story by Moses, the writer of Genesis, to remind all of us. Do not be like Esau. Do not neglect the inheritance that God wants to give to us. Do not simply give it away for passing things. So many people in our world give up their inheritance as rightful children of God, as members of the church, as people called to eternity. So many people are forfeiting it for things of this world. Jacob is a model to us. Do not do that. Jacob's still kind of a sticky figure. Uh, we know that he had multiple wives. Uh, one of his extra wives was basically forced upon him by the man named Laban. Remember the, the two wives mentioned by uh, Genesis? You have the first one was Leah, and then the second wife was Rachel, who was actually the woman that Jacob loved. I find that kind of a, a striking story as well here in the Old Testament. Sometimes we can be very dismissive of ancient ages and the way they thought about women and the beauty of women. And I think that's one of the striking examples, actually, of the Old Testament, that Jacob, out of love for Rachel, was willing to work for seven years to become her husband. And then after Laban tricks him, he works another seven years. When was the last time you knew a man who waited 14 years to win his bride? That's kind of one of those beautiful things. But even throughout the rest of the story, we see some questionable actions of Jacob. The passage we saw today is the story about Jacob wrestling with the angel or the man of God. Not totally sure if it was an angel of God or if it was God himself in a semi-incarnation here in the Old Testament. But what was the significance of this story? Jacob wrestling with God. There's a couple of things we can take away from it. First of all, that all of us, we are called to wrestle with God. 
when it comes to our faith. There are things about our faith that sometimes challenge us, sometimes things that are difficult to understand. And also, we are to wrestle with God's will for us. God's will for us is not something that is typically easily embraced. It's something that has to be wrestled with. And oftentimes we're ready to give ourselves to God, but not entirely. And it becomes like a wrestling match. And I thought about that with my vocation for sure. It took me a long time to wrestle with being called to the priesthood. And then even in the seminary, wrestling with my vocation. And even now as a priest, every day wrestling with the different demands that God is asking of me. All of us have to do that on a daily basis. And the last thing I want to point out about this is that when Jacob wrestled with this angel of God, it's important to understand what happened next in the story that we didn't hear about today. As anybody know uh, what Jacob was doing, he was on his way to meet somebody in this story. He was on his way to meet his brother Esau. So remember, it was almost 20 years earlier that Jacob had stolen the blessing, and Esau was mightily angry with him. And so Jacob had to flee, and he was gone for about 20 years. And he was on his way back to meet his brother Esau and to seek reconciliation. And he was very afraid and nervous. And in fact, as he was on his way there, he heard that his brother was actually coming out to meet him with chariots, horses, seemingly preparing for battle. So Jacob was very worried and nervous. And so I think part of this story is that God wanted to wrestle with Jacob so that Jacob might emerge as someone who has truly wrestled with God, wrestled with his faith and wrestled with God's will, and he's therefore prepared to take on anything that comes to meet him. You can see this in the saints of the church. And you can see this with very holy people. They are people who wrestle with God. And because they wrestle with God first, they are not afraid of anything else that might come against them. All of us are called to wrestle with God in our daily prayer and in our daily life.